Well, politically, another very difficult day for Rishi Sunak today as he had a showdown with his opposite man or one of his opposite men in China, the Chinese Premier, about the suspected spy who has now infiltrated UK democracy and uh, access to a parliamentary pass uh, whilst being suspected of espionage and on the payroll from China. Um, and it was Rishi Sunak, of course, who in the Conservative leadership election, of, of which he lost to the even more China sceptic Liz Truss, um, it was him that promised to be super tough on China and clamped down on China, labelling them as the biggest uh, global threat to the UK's national security. He has gone from that and flandered to a position where he now labels China as an epoch defining challenge, whatever that really means. Um, and I think that's partly why the UK has lacked such a uh, lacked a clear strategy and clear direction against China. Um, it seems we're just idling and allowing China to set the narrative and direction that they like. Um, they have labelled all these uh, espionage claims as nonsense, of course, and it's this um, precedent that allows them to set the narrative and dictate the terms um, of our relationship and the news uh, broadcasted in the media. And it was Kevi Badenoch, of course, this morning on Good Morning Britain um, that suggested a strategy similar to that of Joe Biden's in the USA, of de-risking but not fully decoupling from China, from possibly preventing them from joining, for example, the CPTPP partnership, of which they are meant to be joining, or preventing them from attending the first AI summit in November, which of course the UK is hosting for what was originally meant to be like-minded countries, um, and people like Ian Duncan Smith probably would claim that China is anything but a like-minded country. And all of this uh, took place when, of course, just 10 days ago, James cleverly visited China, the first foreign secretary to go and visit China in about five years. He claimed it was uh, silly not to talk and not to have lines of uh, communication with China because they are, of course, the second biggest economy in the world and the UK's fourth largest trading partner. So if, and for global issues like climate change, uh, we need them to be on board as they are responsible for 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions um, and are burning, for example, 8 billion tonnes of coal this year alone. But it's interesting because the chap arrested today, the suspected spy, um, who of course has pleaded his innocence, was arrested alongside another man in March. And so questions have to be asked of James Cleverly whether he knew about uh, this arrest and yet still visited China uh, last week with no pre-requirements uh, for his visit, despite being the first foreign secretary, as I said, to go in five years. Um, he didn't even ask China to lift the sanction, uh, sanctions on many British MPs like Ian Duncan Smith. Um, so it's, it's berserk that he went over there um, and allowed China to dictate um, the meeting. I mean, all of this is at a time when Chinese youth unemployment is at 21% and the average house price is now approximately 30 or 35 times um, the average income. Um, and in, in ter and domestically, China, uh, as a parliamentary report stated not long ago, has now infiltrated every sector of the UK economy. So it makes it particularly dangerous in industries like nuclear, uh, the steel industry, or, or and, and, and the AI industry, of course, when uh, China is a global leader on AI, um, that China is in such a perilous situation economically. I really do feel, I really do feel um, from lessons learned, uh, from lessons that we should have learned from Ukraine, that all of this makes a Chinese invasion of Taiwan much, much more likely.